This coming Monday, April 2nd, is World Autism Awareness Day. In fact, April is National Autism Awareness Month. Autism rates have climbed steadily in the U.S. after the last few decades, in large part because of increased diagnosis. And the latest reports from the C CDC, which were published in the New England Journal of Medicine, shows that the prevalence of autism in children here in the U.S. from 2014 to 2016 remained relatively stable, but those figures represent the highest autism uh, prevalence in the U.S. reported to the agency for by the agency to date. Joining us tonight is Dr. Lauren Solitar, who's president and CEO of the May Institute, which provides individuals on the autism spectrum with services. Thank you so much for coming in tonight to talk about this. What is behind the rising rate in diagnoses of autism? Yeah, that's a, a, a great question. Um, you know, there are multiple factors. There is no one answer. So, you know, there is, um, you know, earlier um, intervention and there's earlier diagnosis. Yes. So that's, that's one piece. I think people are more aware of autism. So they are bringing their kids to physicians. They're looking mm -hmm. for signs and symptoms. Um, the diagnostic category for autism spectrum disorder has gotten broader. Mm -hmm. And so more people are falling, more kids are falling into the category. So they're getting diagnosed, and there's just more people who now are getting that diagnosis. You say people are more aware of it. Parents are more aware of it. What are some of the early warning signs that parents should be watching for with their very young baby? We're getting under a year now. We can start to see some of this stuff. We, we certainly can, and we have really um, reliable diagnostic tools now um, to help diagnose autism. So some of the signs and symptoms are when, a, when an infant is just a few months old, is looking at are they making eye contact with the parent? Mm. Do they follow you? So if you're moving about the room, does the, do they follow you with their gaze? Mm. Are they making some gestures and sounds? When you speak to your infant, are they orienting to you? As your child begins to grow and develop, we start to look at are they babbling? So at age one, are they babbling? Mm -hmm. Once they're 16 months, we're starting to look at are they saying like single words? And then by two years of age, they should be putting together two words. So those are some of the symptoms. And there, there are huge benefits to early diagnosis. Mm -hmm. What are some of the treatments that really work? So early diagnosis is critical for prognosis. Um, the, the key intervention that has the most scientific um, backing to it and that has the best treatment outcomes is applied behavior analysis. Mm -hmm. And that's what we utilize at the May all the time. And this is a technique, it's really based on the science of learning and behavior. And you're using this scientific method to assess the impact of behavior within the environment and looking at ways to change behavior to create you know, a better learning history, mm -hmm. to increase skills such as communication skills, social skills, play skills, independent living skills. it can be improved. Skills. It absolutely can be improved, and the earlier you intervene, the better you are. And some of that work is being done right at the May Institute. Mm -hmm. In fact, the State Department elected your institute to provide services in the Middle East, to provide training to providers out there. And we know last week a delegation from China was actually here in Randolph studying what is being done at the May Institute. Uh, what are some of the success stories that you can tell these delegations about? Um, sure. We, we have lots of success stories, and I, and I think the greatest stories are when uh, families come to us and we're told by a practitioner that their child would never develop any forms of communication or mm. functional communication, that they would never develop any independent skills, that they would need to be to have 24-7 care for their entire lives. Mm -hmm. And then we see over time with applied behavior analysis and teaching communication and skills that these are kids who develop communication, whether it's verbal, vocal communication, or using an iPad to communicate, or learning sign language to communicate is critical. Kids mm -hmm. graduate from high school, they go on to work, and have jobs and um, it's, 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 it's always miraculous to me even though I see it every day. <laughs> and, and certainly wonderful. there's so much more understanding of mm. Uh, of people with autism and uh, and how institutes like yours have been able to help so many families. Give us your website and in 30 days, 30 events. You're sure. So it's um, www.mayinstitute.org yep. and we will be launching April 2nd. Um, it's uh, 30 days, 30 topics in autism okay. as well as launching um, a celebration of first to, to really celebrate the successes of everyone we serve. Beautiful. Excellent. We love that. Dr. Lauren Solitar, President and CEO of the May Institute, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you very much. Thank you.